The diagnosis checklist allows a list of diagnoses to be used and selected in a template. The list can be as long or as short as you choose. Typically the diagnoses configured here correspond to the diagnoses that are listed on your charge slip. When creating the checklist you have the ability to create groups in which to categorize different types of diagnosis codes, thereby allowing you to easily find codes. These groups will appear as tabs along the top of the checklist. When specific diagnosis codes are added to the checklist, they will be automatically separated into ICD-9 codes and ICD-10 codes, depending upon the code selected. And within the ICD-9 and ICD-10 section, you have the ability to create labels to further sort the diagnosis codes. The following sections will walk you through adding a diagnosis checklist to a template and then configuring the checklist for use. To add a diagnosis checklist to a template, you must first access the template list by clicking View and then Template List. Once the template list has been accessed, you need to select the applicable template you want to add the diagnosis checklist to. In the template editor, click Diagnosis List in the Tools list on the left. Once Diagnosis List is highlighted, make any spacing or other adjustments to the area where you want the Diagnosis Checklist to appear, and then position the cursor where you want the Diagnosis Checklist to appear in the template. After the cursor is blinking in the location you want the new Diagnosis Checklist to appear, click the corresponding button and the Diagnosis Checklist will then appear in the template. To begin configuring the diagnosis checklist that you have just added, click the Properties button to access the Diagnosis Checklist Properties dialog. When the Diagnosis Checklist Properties dialog appears, you will see various fields and columns that allow you to configure what information will appear when diagnoses are selected and removed in a chart note. To begin, in the Heading field, enter the text you want to appear as a label for the Diagnosis Checklist. This will be the name of the checklist and will appear in the blue bar at the top of the checklist when selecting the checklist in the chart note. If you want the heading to appear in the patient note, be sure that the corresponding hide output box to the right is unchecked. If the hide output box is checked, the heading will not appear in the patient's chart note. You can then click into the new diagnoses field and enter the beginning statement or text that will appear before any diagnoses added in the current note. In the corresponding delimiter and conjunctions fields, you can enter the applicable delimiter and conjunction for the new diagnoses field. A delimiter is the punctuation or text that will appear between each selected item in the checklist for the designated field. The most common delimiter would typically be a comma. However, if you want each item to be its own sentence, then use a period in this field. Other options would be to use the backslash R or backslash N functionality. A conjunction is the punctuation or text that will appear before the last selected item in the checklist for the designated field. Common conjunctions would be AND, OR, OR. If you want each item to be its own sentence, then use a period in this field. Other options would be to use the backslash R or backslash N functionality. You can add or modify the verbiage in the Remove Diagnoses, Pre-existing Diagnoses, and Ongoing Diagnoses fields, as well as the corresponding delimiter and conjunctions, in a similar manner as we just configured the New Diagnoses field. The verbiage in these fields will precede the diagnoses that fall within these types of diagnoses when selected. For example, whatever verbiage is in the Remove Diagnoses field will precede any diagnoses that were resolved in the current note, while whatever verbiage is in the pre-existing diagnoses will precede any diagnoses that were updated or modified in the current note, and whatever verbiage is in the Ongoing Diagnosis field will precede any diagnosis that is currently in the patient's chart but is not modified in any manner. However, unlike the New Diagnoses field, for these fields you also have the ability to determine whether or not the corresponding text 
and the accompanying diagnoses will print in the chart note by whether or not the adjacent hide output box is checked or not checked. If the hide output box is checked next to the field, the configured verbiage and corresponding diagnoses selected in the chart note will not print. If this box is unchecked, the verbiage and corresponding diagnoses will print. Next, in the end of list field, enter any punctuation or text you want to appear at the end of the diagnosis checklist, if needed. Typically, this will be a period, and or, and backslash n for creating a space between the diagnosis checklist text and any other subsequent note text. You can now enter the number of columns for the diagnosis checklist. You can have between one and four columns for the checklist. When you have finished configuring the Diagnosis Checklist properties, click the OK button. To access the Diagnosis Checklist to add diagnoses, as well as create and maintain various diagnosis groups, click the Open Diagnosis Checklist button. When you are adding a brand new Diagnosis Checklist to the template and open the Diagnosis Checklist, the checklist will appear blank and there will be one group called unspecified. This unspecified group is a required system-based group that cannot be removed but can be renamed to suit your needs. You can add diagnoses to the checklist via the search add diagnosis button, create and maintain groups via the group maintenance button, and add a label to the checklist via the add label button. Diagnosis groups can be created to assist in categorizing diagnosis codes for easy access and use. Groups will appear as tabs in the diagnosis checklist and can be reordered as desired. A required system-based group, unspecified, will also be present that cannot be removed but can be renamed. Once saved, the diagnosis checklist will show tabs at the top labeled based on the text entered and in the order chosen. When clicked, the screen will change to show the diagnosis selected for that particular group. To add or maintain diagnosis groups, click the Group Maintenance button. In the Group Maintenance dialog, any previously entered groups, along with the system-based group, will be displayed. You can add a new group, rename an existing group, delete an existing group, and modify the order of a group. To add a new group, click the Add button and a new group entry will appear. To rename this new group, highlight the new group and begin typing the new group name. You can also rename an existing group in a similar manner, as well as click anywhere in the group name so that the cursor appears and then modify as needed. To modify the position of a group, highlight the applicable group and then use the Move Up or Move Down button to change the position of that group. To delete a group, highlight the group you want to delete and then click the delete button. Do note, however, that if a group has diagnosis codes configured in it, it cannot be deleted. Only empty groups can be deleted. When finished making additions and modifications, click the OK button. The groups will then appear in the diagnosis checklist as configured. When diagnosis codes and labels are added to the checklist via the Search Add Diagnosis and Add Label buttons, they are inserted into the currently selected group only. You can then copy or move diagnosis and labels to another group, or you can remove them as needed. In the Diagnosis dialog, any diagnoses that have already been added will be listed separated between ICD-10 and ICD-9 codes. Likewise, any groups will be displayed at the top as different tabs. To add a new diagnosis to the checklist, click the applicable group, if needed, and then click the Search Add Diagnosis button. In the Diagnosis Search dialog, you can perform an ICD-10 search, an ICD-9 search, as well as utilize the crosswalk functionality, which allows you to enter an ICD-9 code and then the system will return the applicable ICD-10 codes that match that initial ICD-9 code. When performing an ICD-10 search or using the crosswalk option, the dialog will also contain a tree view 
in the middle column of all the diagnoses, as well as a detailed pane, the right column, that further details the selected diagnosis. Once the diagnosis is selected, it will appear in the selected code section in the corresponding ICD-10 or ICD-9 column, depending upon the type of code. After you click the OK button, those diagnoses will be separated into sections in the checklist based on what type of code they use, ICD-10 or ICD-9. To perform an ICD-10 search, be sure that the ICD-10 search option is selected above, then select the applicable search column and search type, and then begin typing the diagnosis you want to locate in the description field. For our example, we will use hypertension. The system will then return diagnoses that match that description for the search column and search type selected. Once the applicable code has been located, Highlight that code in the left column and the applicable code will become highlighted in the diagnostic tree in the middle column. And the right column will display detailed information regarding the selected diagnosis. In our case, we'll highlight essential or primary hypertension and the diagnosis will be selected in the diagnostic tree and the detailed information will appear in the right pane. To add that code, click the Add to Selected Codes button. The code will then appear in the selected codes area under the ICD-10 column. From here you can scroll through the tree for similar diagnoses, select a different diagnosis in the left pane, or refine your search to locate a different diagnosis. Or you can click the ICD-9 search button to locate ICD-9 codes, or click crosswalk to use the crosswalk functionality. To perform an ICD-9 search, be sure that the ICD-9 search option is selected above, then select the applicable search column and search type, and then begin typing the diagnosis you want to locate in the description field. Here again we will use hypertension, but notice how when we click from ICD-10 search to ICD-9 search, the description that we previously entered remains. This allows you to easily toggle between searches to help you locate the specific diagnosis code you are searching for. Once the applicable code has been located, highlight that code and then click the Add to Selected Codes button. The code will then appear in the Selected Codes area under the ICD-9 column. You can then add additional ICD-9 codes in a similar manner, or perform an ICD-10 search, or use the crosswalk. To use the crosswalk option, be sure that the crosswalk option is selected above and then enter the specific ICD-9 code you would like to match to an applicable ICD-10 code. Do note that if you highlight a code in the ICD-9 search area, that code will default into the description field when you select the crosswalk option. The system will then return ICD-10 codes that match that ICD-9 code in the description field. Once the applicable code has been located, highlight that code in the left column and the applicable code will become highlighted in the diagnostic tree in the middle column and the right column will display detailed information regarding the selected diagnosis. In our example, we will highlight the only diagnosis, essential or primary hypertension, and the diagnosis will be selected in the diagnostic tree and the detailed information will appear in the right pane. To add that code, click the Add to Selected Codes button. The code will then appear in the Selected Codes area under the ICD-10 column. From here you can scroll through the tree for similar diagnoses, select a different diagnosis in the left pane if applicable, or refine your search to locate a different diagnosis. Or you can click the ICD-10 search button to locate ICD-10 codes, or click the ICD-9 search button to locate ICD-9 codes. Once the diagnosis codes have been selected as needed and appear in the selected codes area, you have the ability to remove any of these codes from the selected codes by highlighting the applicable diagnosis codes and then clicking the Remove from Selected Codes button. Do note that it is recommended that you add the majority of the diagnoses that you will be using in this initial phase. When diagnosis codes are first entered, they will be arranged in alphabetical order in the applicable section of the checklist. 
After that initial round in which diagnosis codes were added, whenever you have to add additional codes to the checklist, they will appear at the bottom of the list and will need to be manually moved to their proper position. When the applicable ICD-9 and ICD-10 codes appear in the selected codes area, as needed, click the OK button. Once diagnosis codes have been initially added to the checklist, they will appear in alphabetical order reading left to right in the applicable ICD-10 or ICD-9 section. When additional codes are added for each section, they will appear at the bottom of the list. You can modify the position of a code by clicking and dragging the applicable code to the desired position. To copy a diagnosis to a different group, Right-click the diagnosis in the Diagnosis Checklist, then click Copy to Group, and then click the applicable group. That diagnosis will remain in the current group, as well as be copied to the selected group. To move a diagnosis from a current group to another group, right-click the diagnosis in the Diagnosis Checklist, then click Move to Group, and then click the applicable group. That diagnosis will then be removed from the current group, and move to the selected group. To remove a diagnosis from a diagnosis checklist, right-click the diagnosis that you want to delete and then click Remove. This will remove the diagnosis from the list. A label acts as a separator for a group of diagnoses in a checklist. Labels cannot be clicked on to perform any functionality but instead work as markers to group various diagnoses into categories. When creating labels, that label can be added to either the ICD-9 or ICD-10 section of the checklist. To add a label to a diagnosis checklist, click the Add Label button. In the Add Label dialog, enter the label text you want to appear in the diagnosis checklist. Click the ICD-10 radio button if you want this label to appear in the ICD-10 section of the Diagnosis Checklist, or click the ICD-9 radio button if you want this label to appear in the ICD-9 section of the checklist. When finished, click the OK button. The label will then appear in the selected section of the Diagnosis Checklist at the bottom of the list. You can modify the position of the label by clicking and dragging the label to the desired position. Labels can also be copied and moved to different diagnosis groups in a similar manner as diagnosis codes. Likewise, labels can be removed in a similar manner as well. Simply right-click the label and click Remove. When finished adding and modifying diagnosis codes and labels in the Diagnosis Checklist, click the OK button. The Education Materials button allows you access to the Education Material dialog in a chart note where you can easily select any education materials you have provided the patient in the course of their treatment or visit. These education materials will then be tracked and counted towards the applicable meaningful use objectives and or quality measures. Education material entries can be created and maintained via the system tables. To add an Education Materials button to a template, you must first access the template list by clicking View and then Template List. Once the template list has been accessed, you need to select the applicable template you want to add the Education Materials button to. In the Template Editor, click Education Materials in the Functions list on the left. Once Education Materials is highlighted, Make any spacing or other adjustments to the area where you want the Education Materials button to appear and then position the cursor where you want the Education Materials button to appear in the template. After the cursor is blinking in the location you want the new Education Materials button to appear, click the corresponding button and the Education Materials button will then appear in the template. Next, you can click the Education Materials button to configure the Education Materials heading. In the Education Materials heading dialog, Enter the heading for the Education Materials button you are adding, and then click the OK button. The heading text will then appear to the left of the Education Materials button in the chart note. When finished, be sure to click the Save button if the Auto Save option is unchecked.
The Family History button allows users to add free text notes up to 255 characters, specifically for family history information. When a family history note is entered, the note will appear in the face sheet under the Family History list, as well as be tracked in the History tab. Remember, you can always manually add a Family History button to a patient's chart instantly, even if it is not in the template. To add a Family History button to a template, you must first access the template list by clicking View and then Template List. Once the template list has been accessed, you need to select the applicable template you want to add the Family History button to. In the Template Editor, click Family History in the Tools list to the left. Once Family History is highlighted, make any spacing or other adjustments to the area where you want the Family History button to appear and then position the cursor where you want the Family button to appear in the template. After the cursor is blinking in the location you want the new Family History button to appear, click the corresponding button and the Family History button will then appear in the template. Next, you can click the Family History button to configure the button's heading. In the Miscellaneous Note Heading dialog, enter the heading for the Family History button you are adding and then click the OK button. The heading text will then appear to the left of the Family History button. This heading will precede any family history notes in the chart note. The Implant button allows you to specify implant device information for a surgery procedure, such as the type of device, manufacturer, physical location, product name, model, and serial numbers, date of removal, as well as other pertinent information. To add an implant button to a template, you must first access the template list by clicking View and then Template List. Once the template list has been accessed, you need to select the applicable template you want to add the implant button to. In the template editor, click Implant Device Info in the Tools list to the left. Once Implant Device Info is highlighted, make any spacing or other adjustments to the area where you want the implant button to appear and then position the cursor where you want the implant button to appear in the template. After the cursor is blinking in the location where you want the new implant button to appear, click the corresponding button and the implant button will appear in the template. Next, you can click the implant button to configure the button's heading. In the implant device heading dialog, enter the heading for the implant button you are adding and then click the OK button. The heading text will then appear to the left of the implant button. This heading will precede any implant device information in the chart note. The link button gives you the ability to access or insert a different template into your current note. This allows you to use a single general template for any type of visit and eliminates the need for a template for each specific type of visit, like for example, one for initial exam, one for follow-up visit, etc. The result is a detailed chart note regarding this patient's problem, but entered easily and quickly by the provider. To add a link button to a template, you must first access the template list by clicking View and then Template List. Once the template list has been accessed, you need to select the applicable template you want to add a link button to. In the Template Editor, click Link in the Tools list to the left. Once link is highlighted, make any spacing or other adjustments to the area where you want the link button to appear, and then position the cursor where you want the link button to appear in the template. After the cursor is blinking in the location you want the new link button to appear, click the corresponding button and the link button will appear in the template. Once the link button has been added to the template, you can now provide a name for the link button as well as adding and removing the applicable templates. To do this, Click the Link button. In the Link Button Properties dialog, enter a name for the link button you are adding. Whatever is entered in this field will appear on the link button itself. Therefore, the name entered should describe what type of templates will be found within. Next, you can add a template to the link button by clicking the Add Template button. In the Templates dialog, you can search for a specific template by typing a few letters of the template you want to add. You will see a green line going across the table. This indicates the letters you have typed. If you make a mistake, press the backspace key and type in the correct letter or letters. 
Once the template has been located, you can double click the template you want to add, or you can highlight that template and then click the OK button. You can also select multiple templates to add at once if needed by simply continuing to highlight applicable templates. Once all of the templates have been highlighted, click the OK button and the selected templates will appear in the template list in the Link Button Properties dialog. To remove a selected template from a link button, simply highlight the template you want to remove and then click the Remove Template button. You can then repeat this process to remove any other templates. When finished configuring the link button properties, click the close button. The lookup item allows you to insert previously entered patient information into the chart note. This information is automatically entered into the patient chart by placing a configured lookup item in the chart template. This information includes patient name, address, insurance information, referring doctor, among other types of information. To add a lookup item into a template, you must first access the template list by clicking View and then Template List. Once the template list has been accessed, you need to select the applicable template you want to add the lookup item to. In the template editor, click lookup in the tools list to the left. Once lookup is highlighted, Make any spacing or other adjustments to the area where you want the lookup item to appear, and then position the cursor where you want the lookup item to appear in the template. After the cursor is blinking in the location you want the new lookup item to appear, click the corresponding button and the lookup item will appear in the template. Once the lookup item has been added to the template, you can now configure the item to provide the information you want to be displayed. To do this, right click the lookup item and then click Edit Properties. In the Lookup Properties dialog, you can select the source for the lookup item. The source selects where the information is to be obtained from. You can get the information from the patient, the first through fourth insurer, face sheet, note, codes, addressee, provider, and note sections. Once the source is selected, the applicable fields from that source will be populated. Highlight the particular lookup field you want to include in the template. After the source and field are selected, you can click into the Label field and enter any text you want to appear before the outputted lookup item. For example, if you are outputting a patient's date of birth, then you can enter DOB in the Label field. The field in the top right will become accessible depending upon the source and field selected, allowing you to manipulate the output of the selected field. This field is only available for the following fields, age, date of birth, phone, referring physician, sex, all face sheet fields, and date. The Show Comments checkbox becomes active whenever the face sheet source in a diagnosis field is highlighted. When this option is checked, any applicable diagnosis comments attached to the applicable diagnoses will be outputted to the chart note along with the corresponding diagnosis. When finished configuring the lookup properties, Click the Close button. You will notice that the lookup item will then reflect what source and field are selected. This concludes this section of the Chartmaker Clinical Template Editing training video. To replay this video, click the Replay button. If you'd like to replay a particular section of the video, you can click the appropriate entry in the table of contents to the left. To continue with the next part of the template editing training video, or to view a previous part, click the applicable link on our website.